All right, uh, time now is 10.07 a.m. on June 5th. Um, yeah, uh, I slept from, I slept from 3 a.m. to, like, um, at around 9 a.m. I already woke up, and I just basically stuck on my bed for a while, because I'm just so tired. Um, it fucking sucks that I have to wake up by an alarm. If I could... I would just sleep in, sleep the whole day, and just not go anywhere. But, um, yeah, um, ooh, this is it, uh, final, finally, film 33 is over, uh, for now, until the pickup day, but I really don't want to worry about that, and now I just have to survive one more week. Uh, of uh, college, which is going to be easy peasy cakewalk, and then after that, nothing. So, um, <laughs> that's that. Yeah, last night after I made the couple of Instagram stories, you know, back in 2017, 2018, 2019, I would do these ominous Instagram stories uh, where it's almost like I'm about to kill myself and then no one would really care. But after you know, having a lot of followers, uh, after the two Instagram stories last night, people really start to ask me, hey, are you okay, what's, what happened, like, Miles, like, panic called me, like, Miles texted me, called me on Instagram this morning, and was like, hey, if you want to talk to someone, I'm all here, man, there's something so American about this, it's just like, bro, don't worry about me, I'll survive, um, and this is far from, like, if you want to, like, help me from like feeling suicidal you should have done that like a couple weeks ago and not now because now i don't feel suicidal i want to live on you know uh anyways um i forgot to mention a couple things about yesterday uh yesterday shortly after i've returned to cmd um i wanted to film like this bts of the crazy 360 dolly shot and um and yeah, I was sort of pissed at that moment. Maybe it's because I was just really tired, but I was sort of pissed. And um, Tova, and I don't really like it when people use my camera. Tova used my camera a little bit. Tyler also used it a little bit. Um, and I trust Tova, but like, I let her use the camera. And, I, and at the same time, I don't want to intrude the scene and intrude people on the set. So I was like sort of pissed, um, but it was such a tiny pissed that nobody really noticed. I guess people really did notice how serious I look. That's how I look when I'm tired as fuck. Um, but uh, yeah, and uh, Gustavo a couple days ago invited me to ask me if I want to join him and Patrick to watch Spider-Verse. Hell yeah, I want to do that. And Cliff, I don't think Cliff will do that. Um, so I think I'm just going to ask Gustavo where and when and just freaking do it. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, um, again, last night with Leslie, I just keep having like, I don't know. Again, like if Leslie wants to speak to me, then fucking talk to me on WhatsApp, DM me on Instagram. She's still not looking at my Instagram stories. She's not, she's still not doing any of those. So if you want to talk to me, do that. Do that. You know, because I ain't going back to CMD. I am not going back to CMD anymore. So unless uh, until pickup day, I guess. Or maybe rap party and we meet up at CMD or some shit like that. But aside from that, I'm not going back to CMD. Which is really sad. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, And I just... I remember how Leslie said she likes high quality conversation. And I remember being so close to her, like on May 20th, when I confessed to her and she told me things that she had never told anyone else before. That was like the closest possible. And then now it's just like, I, we can't talk to each other, but I'm willingly not able to talk to her. Like I can talk to her if I want to, but she turned me away. 
on day five of Frank's house, she turned me away. So it was her. I am totally in the right. I am totally in the right. This is one of the rare times where I can say that I am in the right. And if Leslie wants to date me or have a date with me, then like, you know, do something about it. I'm going to wait. She has to do something because I've done my part, you know, and it's not like I can just walk up to her and talk to her yesterday because she's always busy yesterday and she's still going to be busy today, returning stuff to Keslo and Wood and Nickel and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, this is the, the after, the, um, the epilogue, I guess. Um, I'm going to email IEC because Bree told me that if I want to get a job at the International Education Center, I should like email them ASAP. Now is the time. They're interviewing people now. And then, um, also, uh, figure out the whole reduced workload thing, figure out the USC thing, renew my lease. I'm going to try to put my life back to normal today. Um, I'll go to photo one, return the camera. Maybe I'll go to Nijio Market and eat, eat some sushi. <laughs> I kind of miss sushi. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll return to normal life. I'll edit Japan vlog. I'll edit thoughts update. I'll continue my reviews tomorrow onward and um, finalize my short film and everything. Um, move on with life, you know, <laughs> got to move on. I just really, really want to speak to Leslie. I woke up today and first thing I think about is her. I just really, really want her. And I'm sure Crystal will mention my name to Leslie. Last night, like when Leslie came to, went to uh, Crystal's place for dinner. Uh, and I'm sure Leslie will feel something. Or at least I hope. I don't know for sure. But, um, yeah. Leslie, you, you're the one who needs to do something now. I, I can't be the passive one all the time. I, I can't be the active one all the time. Leslie need, needs to be the one who initiates now. She needs to. So, um, yeah, it's unfortunate that we can't talk to each other, but it's not my fucking fault. So... Okay, this is what I got from Nijia Market. I got tofu salad for tonight. Spicy tuna, also for tonight. Fried squid karaage, also for tonight. Cream bun. Got a uh, onigiri. I got a cup noodle. I got a uh, sesame sauce. I got Sprite. I got uh, Fanta strawberry. I got a pack of sausage buns, um, and then right here, I got some beef cubes and some pork slices, I got some carrots, I wanted to find potatoes but I can't, I ended up getting uh, an onion, uh, I've never bought this before, uh, but I'm sick of eating pasta and rice only, so that's that, and also uh, first time buying enoki mushrooms. All right, um, <clears throat> time now is um, 3.38 p.m. Um, so it's been a about a couple of hours since I just returned home. I'm going to quickly recap what happened this morning and talk about my plans now a little bit. So, uh, yeah, this morning I, you know, went to photo one um, and uh, I did nothing. Surprisingly, Aiden showed up. Aiden, the hidden Hong Konger. Um, I thought he will never show up again, but I guess I was wrong. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, he showed up and, uh, I mainly went to photo one to return the camera and oh my God, photo one is in shambles. There's like nobody there. There's like about 11 people in the class only. It's really, really shabby. Um, and it's really quiet and for the most part the professor has nothing to say at some point He took some of us to the photo department room to uh, 
return the cameras. I returned it, and then we returned and to the classroom, and we did nothing, and then that's it. And Aiden, the hidden Hong Konger, drove me home, but I said, uh, can I go to Nijia Market first? And he's like, sure. So um, we went to the Nijia Market first, and uh, we talked a little bit. Um, he said his hair is really long, and he's looking to get a haircut as well. And so he legit wants to uh, uh, drive to Montre Park to uh, have a haircut at that place. And he's totally down to uh, going to that place with me. And when I first gave that proposal to him, when I first told him that maybe he could drive me there, it was just like, uh, what if? Because I literally told a bunch of church people and Thomas the same thing like can you drive me to Montre Park because I like I have multiple plans you know but it seems like he's actually down to do it so that's pretty interesting um yeah um and then uh we talked a little bit about I talked about film 33 there's literally nothing else I could talk about and he's like wow it sounds pretty crazy and uh you know we parked at the public storage parking lot we're not supposed to do that but whatever we went to Nijia market he didn't buy anything i bought a bunch of stuff 60 something dollars worth of stuff i came back home and um, you know, he drove me back home i came back home ate lunch life goes on as is it's still crazy i feel like what happened in the last like 10 days or so is so crazy that it really takes a lot of time for me to digest it uh, so even right now, I'm still sort of processing it. Um, and I feel like in the next few days, I'll process it. You know, last night, I felt really sad. Last night, uh, not really, but last night after the rap, I actually felt sad that it's over. Like, I kind of miss the tension and, 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 the, and the insanity almost. But today, I just feel nothing. I mean... After all, I've only been with the with these people for about a semester, some people for about three semesters, which is quite long, but and long enough to, for me to bond with them, but not as long as six years, you know, in the case of secondary school. Second of all, given how social I am now, just because I've I'm not going to see them anymore doesn't mean I'm completely lost contact with them. Like I still have Instagram, I can still talk to them. Uh, and then another thing is like, most importantly, it's with Leslie and I legit think that there's a chance between us. Like, of course, if I were to be pessimistic, I'll say that Leslie won't say anything to me, um, anymore, but I don't think that will be the case. I think after today, uh, after, uh, Everybody returned the props to Sony and the cameras to Keslo and everything. Uh, Leslie will probably, uh, hopefully, reinstall Instagram or something. Uh, apparently, Leslie got drunk a couple nights ago. After Torrance uh, on day seven, Leslie drank and uh, she texted Anna in, at, at around 3 a.m. in the morning uh, saying sorry for being mean or whatever. Um, and also apparently, I think I mentioned, did I mention this? Uh, apparently Cliff tried a real cigarette yesterday. Also in Torrance, Red tried a cigarette for the first time in his life. Um, and uh, yeah, I overheard Leslie whispering to Cliff and it was whispering, but it's loud enough for me to overhear it. <laughs> and Leslie asking, oh, so you tried a real cigarette? And Cliff's like, yeah, and Leslie said, oh, it's going to change your life. Um, I low-key expected that this shoot will be so stressful that I will try my first cigarette for the first time because of Leslie. And I wouldn't like it if I just tried with a friend or something. It has to be a girl and it has to be Leslie who forces me to do it. And I don't want to do it. Uh, that And only in that scenario, it would work out. So... <laughs> yeah um but i was also low-key like a while ago i would like fantasize myself drinking with leslie on the day of rap um but uh, alas it did not happen but it's okay um uh we'll see we'll see honestly i legit think leslie will probably do something 
maybe Leslie. And it's so sudden too, you know, uh, you know, before the confession, I and Leslie talk almost once every two to three days. And even when nothing's happening, Leslie would say, oh, let's watch this movie together. Oh, that movie, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so hopefully Leslie will get back on that. But um, nonetheless, that's that. I thought about doing a, an album review today um, because my voice is deep enough right now to do it. And also I, you know, everything's over. But I'm, A, I'm still extremely tired right now. I slept for about uh, six and a half hours, which is way better, but also not great. You know, I wish I could sleep for nine to ten hours. Um, so, um, yeah. Second of all, I legit need to rest. If I forced myself to do a review now, I probably wouldn't be able to do it anyways. Um, I really need a day of just nothingness. Um, and also multiple people want to call me now. Uh, Rattablo wants to call me, Thomas wants to call me. Uh, I have to call Michelle as well. Um, huh. and I guess, um... Yeah, I spoke with Gustavo a little bit about watching Spider-Verse because he and Patrick are watching Spider-Verse in freaking uh, Hawthorne near LAX, south of LAX. That's too freaking far away. I'm sorry, I can't go. So, I'm sorry. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I spoke to Aiden a little bit about getting a job and I said there are about three restaurants around my place that I like maybe I'll ask if they're hiring and Aiden said oh there's a restaurant there's a Chinese restaurant uh like on a slope some rice noodle and the moment he said that it's on a slope I immediately know which one he's talking about and apparently that Chinese classmate that we have in photo one who is not taking a class anymore right now apparently um he's working there that's really interesting uh, but yeah, that's basically it. All right, time now is uh, 9.44 p.m. Just finished dinner. Some good spicy tuna sushi, some tofu salad, some fried squid, onigiri. That in total is like 15 bucks, which is not cheap. Uh, for a dinner like that, it's very cheap. But the fact that I ate it at home is like, that's like restaurant level money. Uh, but I don't care. I just want to enjoy some. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to wrap it up here. Um, nothing important happened today. And all for the right reasons. Today was truly a peaceful day. And um, I'm enjoying the peace. I'm definitely enjoying the peace. Um, Leslie still hasn't seen my Instagram stories or uh, read my text. Okay, before I talk about Leslie. Um, yeah. Um, when I was having dinner halfway through, Michael, the Colombian boyfriend guy, showed up and walked past me. And he was like, why are you still living here, bro? <coughs> and I was sort of confused. So I'm like, hmm? And he said it again, why are you still living here, bro? Um, and he sort of walked away. And I took it as an insult. <coughs> or like, you know, why the fuck are you still living here? Like... Because this place is so bad. Because of you. It's your fault or something. So this guy is beginning to be hostile towards me. Um, as expected. Um, you know. And I'm really good at taming people. Um, but I guess not this case. Because I'm so quiet in this apartment. I, I don't want to have anything to do with the guy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you know. If push comes to shove. We have a fist fight. That would be a legendary story. Uh, but I hope it doesn't go there. Uh, and I don't want to care about him anyways. These roommates mean nothing to me. Um, anyways, uh, I had a, an hour phone call with Retablo. And I don't want to uh, uh, disclose details. But I did talk thoroughly about my relationship with Leslie. And the whole situation with her. And the uh, both him and Michelle also think that I should just leave her completely. Because she seems like a really toxic, manipulative person. And manipulative. That's very interesting. Mich for Michelle, Leslie's just a child. But for that guy, 
uh, Leslie is more of a manipulative person. Like the way he would be mean to me one day and the way she would play with my hair and be nice to me the other day. Yeah, that's quite man manipulative behavior, but also maybe not. I don't think she did it intentionally to play with my feelings. I think Leslie, uh, you know, did those things to me because those are the things she wants to do. And in some ways, I think uh, she may have borderline personality disorder, but also I think um, she just, her mind is so chaotic, it jumps all over the place. So, and she doesn't treat people with a filter, unlike me. When I talk to people, I always have a filter on so that my real intentions are unclear so that people can't figure me out uh, unless I really trust that person like Michelle. Um, and recently, I removed my filter a lot in Film 33 because I really don't care anymore, um, which is great. But um, anyways, back to Leslie. Um, I don't think she's being manipulative, but it's an interesting thought. And even even with that, I still want to pursue her. I still love her as fuck. And I would, you know, if if only Leslie was a nicer person, I would, you know, give her a big hug. I would, I would really like, I would really like enjoy my time with her. But yeah, I don't know. The thing is, again, like I said earlier, I've done everything right. Um, I, I, um, you know, I did everything right. I didn't bother her at all during uh, the production. During the shoot, I didn't bother her at all. And, um, you know, she's not looking at my WhatsApp. She's not on Instagram, I guess. So... Like, I mean, if she wants to speak to me, she got to speak up because the next time I see her, I don't know when will that be. I have no idea when will that be. Maybe a couple weeks from now, maybe three weeks from now, maybe a whole month from now, maybe next semester. I don't know. But I won't be seeing her for a very long time unless she speaks up to me. It's on her. Now, again, <clears throat> I love her and not seeing her and not hearing her voice pains me. It hurts, but it's okay because I can stand being hurt because I'm hurt all the time. It's nothing to me. It's child's play. It's nothing to me. It's child's play. But to her, it's different because she can't handle the pain. She will try to drink her pain away and it won't work. She will still be sad. If she can be sad with Kiana breaking friendship with her, I think she will be sad if I break my relationship with her. I think she'll be just as saddened by this. And if she does nothing, then, well, you know, it's it's on you, bro. It's on you, dude. Do something about it. Don't make me be the one who's begging. You, it's your turn to beg. So, uh... Yeah, so I'm chill. I'm chilling in my room. I'm chilling. I'm going to live a peaceful life. I'm going to live a peaceful, stable life from here on out for the next few months, hopefully. Um, I mean, hopefully I and Leslie would come together and go somewhere and, uh, you know, be a thing. And hopefully I would enjoy my time being here. But next semester will definitely not be as interesting or as exciting as this one. And it's okay. Uh, it's okay. It's totally okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Again, there are so many things I can do with her. I want to watch The Exorcist with her. I want to, you know, the other day I've been thinking, I want to watch In the Mood for Love with her. Because there's just something so, so in the mood for love about, like, how I and Leslie act during the shoot like how we pass by each other a lot and not say a thing or sometimes i would look at her and she would notice me sometimes she would look at me um 
there were so many times where I would stare at her and I know he saw me staring at her and I would keep staring. I should have done that actually. Like last night on the right before I left, I just I wish I could just stare at Leslie until she gets it and then walk away. Um <clears throat> but I think she already gets it. Usually I'm like uncertain about things, but I'm certain about this one. I'm certain that Leslie feels at least some way towards me. Maybe not romance, but at least some ways, you know? And, um, yeah, again, like, if you want to do something about it, do something about it. I won't do anything about it because I'm chilling in my good-ass position. Maybe Leslie's waiting for me. Maybe she thinks I'm emotionally weak and I'm debating if I should, like, reach her out. How the hell do I even do that? I mean, I can text her, probably, but also, uh, you know, WhatsApp, not working. Instagram, not working. Then, you know, then what? So, uh, yeah, it's on her now. I won't care. I'll just keep moving on. Um, I spoke with Michelle a little bit. Thomas called me for like a couple minutes. Apparently, Michelle saw Thomas in the main campus. And Thomas was acting really goofy. Um, and, uh, yeah, Thomas asked me when does he want me to, want him to drive me to Montreal Park. And I said, another friend is driving me. So, that's happening. And if that happens, then this Sunday, I don't have to go to church. Because if this Sunday I go to church just for the sake of getting a haircut, then it's kind of stupid. Also, um, next Monday is the final class for photo one and it's a final final meaning that it's supposed to be an exam but there is no exam so what's happening is uh we'll go there from 12 p.m to 3 p.m and i i um i assume that it's going to be like both morning and afternoon classes combined so i will i may run into eric and pepper and alba there which is very interesting so you know, we'll see. Yeah, I, I just find it so funny that out of Pepper, Eric, and Alba, a Filipino-American boy and a Hong Konger girl, a Japanese girl, the Japanese girl and the Filipino-American boy, or man, he's older than me, is closer to me than Pepper herself. I realize that I really don't voluntarily text Pepper at, at, at all. Like, I don't tell her about Film 33 drama anymore because I truly don't care. Um... <clears throat> Um, and Pepper only learns shit through Eric, and I learn that, you know, they're go going to a photo shoot through Alba. Like, Pepper didn't say anything to me. It's so funny. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Alright, time now is 11.34, um, a.m. on, um... June 6th, uh, yeah, I, uh, I had a good sleep, I slept from around 2.30 to, um, 10.30, but I, um, I went back to bed and slept until 11.20, so, uh, that's a really good rough nine hours sleep, I woke up a couple times in the middle, uh, one of my roommates decided to turn off the air con, like, five minutes after i turn it on so that's great um anyways um yeah another day another peaceful day uh today's a tuesday which means that i will have to go to photo two on top of that i would like to um have a zoom call with iec uh with the international education center to talk about what i want to do next semester uh i want to do reduced workload take six units and also uh, find employment. In fact, I just got an email back from IEC saying thank you for uh, being interested in working at the IEC. So maybe I don't have to find work illegally now. Um, yeah, and then um, at the same time, my life will resume. Okay, I will start doing reviews again. I will uh, watch movies again. Last night I watched half an episode of Succession. I almost fell asleep. I'm so fucking tired. But I think I'm recharged today. Um, 
even though I woke up by an alarm, uh, but the nine hours sleep really, really helped me rejuvenate. Um, and um, I feel fine. I feel fine. Um, I'm going to see Aoba, Pepper, and Potter again. Talk to them a little. It's going to be nice. Um, I may watch Spider-Verse by myself. So I spoke with Cliff last night and asked him if he's still interested in watching Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And he said he's just not interested in watching superhero films. I totally get it. But he, but he said uh, Justin wants to watch it. And so I DM Justin. Turns out Justin have watched it already on the opening night. So, uh, well, I guess I'll just watch it myself. Who cares? Um, I watch movies by myself all the time. You know, I don't have to go with people. Um, and uh, I also DM'd Ken and said that, hey, I'm available this Thursday again to watch M. And Ken said he's debating whether to go to M or Bellator. Either way, I'm fucking happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, anyways, um, yeah, I want to watch Taxi Driver with Leslie, even though I already watched it with Cliff. Uh, but if it's with a girl I love, it's so symbolic too. And I also want to watch 2001 A Space Odyssey with her as well uh, in Landmark Newart, which is fucking insane. I need to watch that on a big screen. But uh, yeah, still no news from Leslie, no text, no whatever. Again, it's just a waiting game. It's not even a game for me. Like if Leslie never speaks to me ever again from this point on, it's fucking sad. Sure. But I will be able to handle it. You know, a couple months from now, I'll just move on. It's sad, but I will move on because I always have. Mary didn't speak to me for two months and it sucks, but I could handle the pain. You know, I would just keep looking at pictures of Leslie on my phone, in my camera, every day. And that's all I need. But if Leslie really wants to talk to me, it's on her, you know. Again, like I said, it's on her. Um, yeah, so um, at least I'm not just like waiting for Leslie to text me back like, I hope she likes me or something. Because I know for sure right now that Leslie to some degree wants to speak to me. I know for sure that Leslie to some degree feels something towards me. I know for sure in the bottom of my heart. So that's already a huge fucking W. I think I had a dream about Film 33, like our crew ended up somewhere in the near the Arctic North in Alaska or Iceland or something. And we were at this really modern looking school. We went to the rooftop and played with snow and ice and we had fun. And uh, everyone's there. Yeah, I don't know. And then after we left that school, I was like, damn it, I forgot to vlog. Um, but uh, yeah. Something like that. But yeah, again, like with Leslie, I I still really, really love her. I still really, I'm infatuated with her. I'm obsessed. But also, I can handle the pain. I can handle distance. She can't. She was so depressed by the fact that the Chinese girl is away from her. She is bummed out by... She had a breaking friendship with her. Whatever I and her had, it's gone. And she will be bummed out by that too. So it's on her to do something. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Spicy. 
very interesting. There goes Aoba, Pepper, and Potter. <laughs> All right, time now is 10.31 um, <clears throat> p.m. Um, let's wrap it up. Yeah, today is not a bad day at all. Um, it's not bad. Uh, <laughs> again, relatively peaceful, of course, but in a good heartwarming way, I feel like. Um, I arrived in photo two and I was late by half an hour. Honestly, I don't really care. Okay, so first of all, I had a Zoom call with the IEC folk, um, with the International Education Center, and I've received some useful information. There's a form I need to fill in. And um, yeah, there's a form I need to fill in. I'm gonna send them to an address, request reduce workload, it should work. Um, and then about working in the IEC, it's kind of possible i need to talk i need to talk to some other people to figure it out but i will figure it out um and then another thing is uh and another thing is um i um yeah you know the zoom meeting okay i had lunch and then after that um and my lunch was basically a sausage bun some fried squid karaage and some bok choy I was gonna cook myself rice and eat chicken thigh, one chicken thigh, but I just didn't have time to do that, so it's whatever. Um, I went to photo two, I was late by half an hour. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Apparently I missed nothing last week. Uh, last week they kept on printing and printing and printing. And today is apparently the last class of film, uh, of photo two. So thank God I decided to come today because I thought next Tuesday would be the last class. Apparently today's the last class. We uh, put our portrait photo uh, in a large box and uh, we uh, submitted all our assignments. And uh, essentially, uh, for the most part of today, is uh, the professor gave all of us two thick cardboards. Uh, we have our own printed photo uh, and we basically use a pencil and ruler to draw out a, a cutout of the cardboard. We cut out the cardboard using uh, the giant cutting thing and we put two cardboards on top on the portrait photo and we turn it into a portrait with a frame. We turn it into a frame essentially. And um, that took a while, you know, for the most part, me, Pepper, Potter and Alba would be talking and chatting. I talked with Pepper a little bit. I talked with Potter a little bit. Um, and again, mostly I can only talk about film 33 because that is the big thing. And I'm still personally, processing from the insanity that is film 33 it's just such an insane class that it just left such a huge impact on me and i don't know when i arrived at uh, cmd today uh no no not cmd and when i arrived at the main campus today there's just something really quiet about the campus that just really made me go oh my god like i feel there i feel peaceful but in almost in a sad melancholic way like it's the aftertaste of film 33. I also ran into Nick on the bus on the way there. Also, I ran into Theo, which is really weird because Theo is part of the insanity, a huge part of the insanity. And I saw him uh, just talking to people uh, among the tables. Um, but yeah, there's that. And he's like, where are you going? You know, where are you going? And I'm like, I have class, okay. Um, anyways, I... Um, <laughs> I uh, went to class and then uh, again framed the photograph and then we went to uh, a classroom that I've never been to in the business building to showcase the photos and you know do some criti criticism work and um, yeah apparently one of the uh, students one of the classmates a very short girl apparently she's from the Philippines um, she brought a bunch of deep fried bananas and I got to ate one, which is pretty cool. And everyone got to ate one. And then the Japanese uh, assistant, uh, teacher assistant, Nagisa, um, got my and Pepper's Instagram. I've always wanted to ask her for Instagram or something like that. Um, but uh, she asked first and uh, she took a selfie. Uh, she took a photo of me, Aoba, Pepper, and Potter. 
and repo and posted it on her stories. So uh, that's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, uh, I uh, yeah, and then we went to the classroom to to criticize the photos, and my photo was uh, liked by someone. Uh, uh, the French girl, the hot French girl, didn't like my photo. And I was forced to pick a photo that I did not like, and it's this really plain photograph of Diego, and I really hate to point that one out, but apparently that one is Lily's photo. And then uh, afterwards, um, actually, very soon after the class started the, earlier today, Aoba already asked me, like, hey, you know, do you want to go have dinner later with uh, Pepper and Potter and maybe a Lily, the lesbian girl? And I'm like, yeah, of course, sure. Um, you know, in the first class of photo two, Alba was like, do you want to eat something? And we never did. So today's the day. And apparently today's the last class, so might as well go off with me. So after photo two, me, Pepper, Potter, and Alba uh, took a bus and walked all the way to a Thai restaurant. That is actually really near my apartment. Um, and... Uh, Went in there, and it's a pretty expensive Thai restaurant. And honestly, the food isn't that great. Uh, I ordered a Panang uh, pork neck curry. Same with Potter. Pepper ordered a uh, Pad Thai, and Alba ordered green curry. And the curry I ordered didn't have any vegetables at all, so a little underwhelming. And I didn't buy a drink or anything else. We also had Thai dim sum. Apparently, it's a siu mai, and it's like regular siu mai, but with some sauce on it. Nothing all that crazy. Um... And I ended up paying 25 bucks for it. So that's pretty expensive, not going to lie. Um, but it was a good meal and we talked a lot. We talked about a lot of stuff uh, ranging from Japan because all of us going back to Japan. And, you know, we talked about Japan a lot. And I talked about how I want to go to a few places. We ended up talking about traveling a little bit. Um, I, and then we talked about photo uh drama in the photo department which is really interesting i mean i know all the drama in the film department that's my main domain but of course in every department in this college there is some form of drama um but uh, again i'm sure the film department drama triumphs at all because it is so isolated maybe the music department has drama some crazy drama in it because again it's artsy department and you know i can only imagine the crazy drama that happens uh, in an orchestra or like a theater play or, or a choir or some shit like that. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, film department drama is top tier drama. Let's be real. Um, but still, in the photo department, we have some drama. And I've received so much drama. So at this point, I'm sort of tired of it. But you know what? I'll hear it out. Uh, so apparently, um, Lily, the lesbian girl, and another guy whose name is Henry, who is also one of the teacher assistants there, are in a relationship now. Which is really fucking weird, because that guy is 40 years old, and apparently Lily is 19. And that's a little sus, because Henry told Lily that he's 27. And that's a lie. We don't know for sure what's the truth, but given that his answer keeps changing. Uh, at some point, he's apparently 37 years old. Um, the answer keeps changing, so it's really weird. Um, <clears throat> and apparently, Nagisa, the Japanese girl... She's only 23, and Henry sexually harassed her. You know, Henry flirted with her. She didn't like it. He kept on flirting with her. It's been getting kind of weird lately. And um, it got so... Anyways, um, Henry stopped liking Nagisa and started to like Lily. And turns out Lily's 19-year-old. I thought Lily's older than me. I guess not. Um, there have been so many instances where Lily would invite Henry to Potter's place because Potter lives in the host family with Lily and um, that it would be really, really awkward. And so that's really weird. And on top of that, the guy who stands next to me, the long haired Latino guy who's always listening to metal music in his earphones, who's really good at printing stuff. His name is Carlos. And apparently for about a couple weeks, Carlos and Lily dated and they went to underground metal concerts together. And they dated, and then that was shortly before Lily moved into Potter's place. Carlos got jealous, and after Lily apparently started dating Henry, um, Carlos tried to befriend Potter to understand Lily more. 
So that's the gist of it, and that's really interesting and weird. And I've never heard about Al I've never heard Alba spilling tea before. And after Alba spilled the tea, Potter's like, "Okay, now that you've said it, I can talk about it too." So Potter continued to talk about it, um, and it's really interesting. Not really interesting. It's nothing compared to the insanity that is um, the film department. But uh, I'm just like, yeah. And then so I started talking about my uh, film theory three drama, and like there's a snitch, there's Zach and Sidlali having sex every day. And it's weird because neither Potter nor Alba or Pepper really know who they are. So it's like talking to them about nothing. But it just goes to show how insane Film 33 is. Um, and apparently, so Rachel, this Hong Konger girl who uh, is uh, Pop, uh, Pepper's uh, senpai, Pepper's secondary school alumni, who is also in the film department of my college and is studying in USC now, the girl who DM'd me a little earlier... <laughs> She spoke with Alba for some reason about how on the set of Alive, which is um, two semesters ago, uh, the film 33, um, on the set of Alive, in the woods, some crew members started having sex, which is really weird. And that's part of the reason why Rachel decided not to take film 33. So meaning that Rachel PA'd for both leaving the factory and Alive, and uh, she could have taken film 33 for WoW, and she did not. So that's really interesting. And uh, and then I asked Alba, wait, so how do you know Rachel? Apparently Rachel was at some point the president of the ISF. What the fuck? So now I even know, like, what are the presidents? Right now it's Abril, the Mexican girl. Before that, last year, it's Antoine, the Lebanese. Before Antoine, it's Rachel, the Hong Konger. It's all adding up. And then at some point in, in the past, it's equal. And then for film club, right now it's Mateusz, and before that is Theo the Italian, before that it's um, Betsy, and before that it's Keaton. And then for script writing club, it's Thomas, and then before that it's Kat, sort of, and then before Kat it's sort of um, uh, Angel from Wednesday Film 32. Um, and also, uh, Thomas also recently told me that uh, the, next the next year the script writing club presidents will be a co-producer, uh, a co-president between Daniel the Australian and Miles, um, which is, eh, I mean, they're both really good and really consistent, but also two white men, uh, not a great look. Um, but uh, I mean, we just went from two Asian men to two white men, so we'll see. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, aside from that, that's the news, that's the scoop. At the very end of the dinner, we realized that this is it, given that there will be no more photo two. And for photo one final exam, turns out it's not like a class blending thing, meaning that uh, um, Aoba, Pepper, and Eric will show up at 9 a.m. next Monday. Me, Aiden, the Hidden Hong Kong, and another person, and all the other people in my photo one class will show up at 12 at noon. We have different times. So our final exam schedule is actually different. I thought both the morning and the afternoon photo one classes will blend together. I guess not. Meaning that I won't see Pepper ever again. Uh, quite possibly. Pepper's leaving to Hong Kong on June 15th. And uh, Alba's leaving to Japan on June 14th. And Pepper's going to go all around. Pepper's going to go to Tokyo for three days. She's going to Shizuoka. Uh, she's going to Kyoto to visit her other sister, and then she's going back to Hokkaido to find a, a part-time job, and Pepper's going back to Hong Kong. And given that Pepper's transferring to LMU screenwriting, Aoba's transferring to CSUN. After today, I don't think I'll ever have a chance to see Pepper ever again in my life, theoretically, unless we decide to hang out or some shit. Uh, and I will see Aoba one more time, because apparently this Saturday, uh, Aoba wants to go to Thomas's place uh, for a podcast. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's that, um, huh, very interesting, also kind of sad, but then again, film 33 is just over, I can literally take anything, so I said goodbye to Pepper and Alba, and I'm sure I'll hang up with Potter at some point in the summer, because why the fuck not, and it is what it is. I also spent a great deal of time on the bus, and then after the bus, to tell Potter about my experience with Leslie, I think... Um, at this point, he's like the seventh person or the eighth person to know anyways. Uh, like there's, um, 
the first person to know is Michelle. And then, um, I remember Talo, but he doesn't count because he's out of the story. First person to know is Michelle. I told Cliff, but I didn't tell Cliff the details. So it's Michelle, Cliff, and then I accidentally told Benny. And that led to Bree and Ariel knowing. I told Tova. And then, uh, now I've told Potter. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, Potter's opinion is kind of interesting. After telling him all that, he thought that what I should do is I should just chill. Don't make this a huge thing. Like, don't play mind games and chess and whatever. Don't spend too much effort. Just chill out, step back, and let it just go with the flow. The thing is, right now it seems that Leslie's scared. Not scared, but like she's a little intimidated. After I confess to her, because I guess it's it's kind of a rare thing, but also um, because she doesn't exactly know what she feels. Like if I confess to her and she for sure knows that I suck ass and she says no, then she's certain. But the thing is, I confess to her and she's like wobbling. She's like, okay, this guy's good, but should I? Mm. Like she's wobbling. And she's intimidated. So that's why she's avoiding me and being weird towards me. But then sometimes she wants to speak to me. And sometimes she doesn't. So she is intimidated. And I thought maybe that's true. But that also doesn't feel like something that Leslie would do. Because it's very much not her personality. But maybe it is. You never know. So that's very interesting. So maybe Leslie really wants to speak to me right now. Um, and it all adds up because Leslie went up to Ariel and hugged her and said, uh, I'm not a purely lesbian thing. That incident as well, uh, really proved that Leslie actually does want to speak to me. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see, I guess. But again, right now it's on Leslie. I'm just chilling. I'm not going to go out of my way to speak to Leslie. I'm just gonna, you know, wait. And, uh, if she doesn't do anything, then fine. Uh, it's really on her right now. Um, but yeah, I told Potter that Leslie told me she likes me 80% and Potter's like, that's fucking great. Like, I'll take it. And it's funny because Michelle, when I told Michelle that, Michelle's like, bro, 80%? She's talking numbers? That's, that's like, that's terrible. That's like working a business deal. And I can tell both Michelle and Potter have a point. Uh, personally, I accept the 80%. And I understand, like, it would be freaking unbelievable if she likes me 100%. And I think for someone like Leslie, who literally thinks everyone else is stupid, um, you know, 80% is pretty strong. And yeah, maybe her views of me have changed a little bit during the production of WoW, uh, not WoW, uh, Ends and Means. Um, but I think it still stands, given that on day seven, uh, he still, she still wants to speak to me, so... Again, we'll see. And given how much I stared at her, I think she knows that I know something's up. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. All right. <clears throat> Time now is 1.47 p.m. on June 7th. Woo! So, um, I slept from 3.30 to 12. Um, and then right after I woke up, I um, got stomach ache. Uh, not really a stomach ache. I just wanted to go to the bathroom, so it took a little while. Um, now I'm here, and uh, yeah, I honestly don't care. So today is a Wednesday, and normally there's photo one class, but today's photo one class is canceled because there is no class today. Um, there's nothing to do anyways. So um, yeah, uh, originally I wanted to go to the cinemas alone to watch Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse by myself today. But on second thought, maybe not do that. I still really, really want to watch the film with someone else. And so um, last night I asked Michelle. And it was sort of reluctant because I realized that I and Michelle have never hung out and watched a movie together. We've hung out, but we've never watched a movie together. But at this point, we're so close that we may as well do that. You know, given that I also watch movies with Ken, I've watched a movie with Aoba. Uh, I watched a mo movies uh, with Drew and Leslie. I may as well just, uh, you know, invite Michelle, who is arguably at this point one of the closest person uh, to me. So um, I asked her, and she's like, first of all, you got to work on your inviting skills. Second of all, yes, I want to watch it." 
So uh, we're planning to watch it on either Saturday or Sunday. Um, so this means that today I'll probably spend the whole day in my apartment. It's going to be real peaceful and it's going to be great uh, because I'm still processing film 33. After it's over like three days ago, I'm still having a hard time processing it. So um, yeah, yeah, I'm still processing it and um, going through the, you know, griefing period, I guess. Um, and, uh, yeah, in the meantime, I should just continue to do normal stuff, laundry, I'm gonna start editing my Japan vlogs again, I'm gonna edit reviews, I'm gonna, um, try to continue working on, uh, getting a job for, at IEC, uh, send a resume there, also begin working on the rap party for Film 33, which is very exciting, uh, like an epilogue, um, and, uh, yeah, <coughs> once again, just like, Yesterday morning, this morning I woke up and the first thing I think about is Leslie. I don't know. At this point, again, I'm just going to wait. I'm a man of patience. And I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And the thing is, I don't think Leslie will ever text me anymore again. Because she's probably still struggling. And my guess is that she's trying to run away from her struggles. Like, she doesn't want to make a first step. At the end of the day, she's only an 18-year-old girl, and maybe she's just too scared to make a first step. Um, <coughs> even though she confessed to Theo on the fucking bus, I st I'm still mad at that. But um, she's probably like a little intimidated by that. And um, yeah, um, but we'll see. You know. At Eventually, I'll see her again, honestly, in the rap party and in the pickup day. I think I'll see them again. So, um, yeah, and even if I and Tova go back to CMD in the summer to edit the documentary, I'm sure I'll run into her. So, um, yeah, you know, we'll see. But next time she sees me, I'll have short hair. I'll look crisp. And I hope she's surprised by that. Um, and I definitely won't treat her the same way anymore. Um yeah i just um i've been treating her too nice and i've been treating her like an adult because she does act really mature at times you know but um <clears throat> yeah she does act really mature at times uh she's so aggressive and dominating and she knows everything and treats everyone like kids but she herself is the kid and you can tell by how emotionally unstable she is, how unsure she is, how much she struggles over one emotional decision. I mean, I struggle too, but not as much as she does. And yeah, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. But um, yeah, I guess that's the only thing I can say. We'll see. So today I'll try something special. I just cooked up some rice. I got some cabbage, really old cabbage, garlic. Um, I got some bacon grease that I've been keeping in my fridge for like a couple weeks now refrigerated and I'm frying up some really old chicken chicken thighs that I cooked like a whole week ago and it's been in my fridge for a week oh okay Okay, this is where the fun, bar fun part begins. I start the fire, got the bacon grease. Ooh, very, very oily, holy crap. You know, I always cook bacon and they leave so much grease. It's like, I don't wanna waste them though because I literally paid for it and I thought, ooh, what if I use it to make fried rice? Let's just uh, plop it here for the time being. <sighs> and then, next up, garlic, and then I'll add the rice. All right, definitely the garlic is getting sizzled right now. And then we shall add the rice. How do I do it while filming? I don't know. Oh, God damn it. There you go. So uh, I do this. 
completely drenched in oil. Holy crap. That's too much oil for too little rice. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have added all the bacon grease. Holy crap. I'm just gonna let it sit here and be fried for a little while. Um, and then I'll add the cabbage. I'll add a little soy sauce and I'll add this, which I cut up. And then, just a tad bit of soy sauce. Just a touch. There we go. Just added the chicken. Let's try this cabbage. Ooh, also the, the rice. Can you hear it? It's a little crispy because of how much I fried it. All right, but anyways, cabbage, garlic, chicken, thigh, fried rice. Here we go. Let's try it out. I hate to say this, but it doesn't taste like anything. It's fine, but it's just not enough flavor. Eh, I tried my best. All right, so um, time now is uh, 10 54 p.m. I just finished dinner, which is uh, pasta, beef and broccoli fried together with garlic. That's it. Not terrible, but right before having dinner, I had such a strong craving for soup and steamed fish. I just, it's, it just sucks that I can't find it anywhere. I think it's been like half a year since I've had steamed fish. I gotta figure out how to do it myself. Jesus Christ. Um,. Yeah, and also like, oh. anyways, today is a relatively um, peaceful day. Nothing happened. I didn't leave the apartment at once. I didn't speak to a single human being in person at all. I stayed in my own lane. That's it. Um, kind of chill, really restful. I'm enjoying it. Um, and uh, again, no news from Leslie at all. Uh, I'm going to talk about that a little later. Um, I didn't even text Michelle. I really didn't do anything today. Um, I did watch an episode of Succession. I filmed a couple of reviews. That's it. I'm going to continue on with my life. Um, I'm going to edit Japan vlog. I have a bunch of stuff to do. I've got, I'm going to edit Japan vlog, send a resume to IEC. Freaking. Um, also, I wanted Bodega to be my backup plan for a, a second, like, second choice job in my college campus. But apparently the interview sec sessions have already stopped on June freaking 2nd. 
That is literally day six of the shoot. It's impossible. So screw that. So my only hope is the IEC. Um, and another thing I have to do is my art history class homework, uh, which is very annoying. Um, and then I guess, um, I guess that's it. And then I want to edit my short film, make a trailer. And, uh, and also I want to film myself, talk about my short film. Uh, that's something I've been meaning to do for a while now. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, nothing special. I'm glad I'm able to be caught up with things and not run out of time constantly. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I also spoke with Ken a little bit, actually, on Instagram. Um, Ken, at the end, decided to watch Bellatar instead of M tomorrow and uh, <coughs> invited me to go. And I'm like, sure. And we'll, it's a double feature. And uh, he wants to go to both of them, and I'm like, fine. I've never seen a Bellatar film, and it's not even like a more well-known Bellatar film. We're watching Damnation and The Man from London, which are both very deep cuts, I would say. Um, Bellatar is already deep cut, and this is deep cut of a deep cut for about four hours straight. Um, it's going to be an experience. Um, but, uh, you know, at least that's that. So tomorrow... I will head over to Ken's place at around 6.30 p.m. And then, um, you know, the rest is history. Um, so um, there's that. <coughs> um, and then on, um, so tomorrow's a Thursday. On Friday, um, I think I will be hanging out with Aiden the Hidden Hong Konger. I DM'd him earlier today and he said um, he's free on Friday. So Friday it is and it has to be Friday. Because we got to return the cameras. Well, he got to return the camera on Friday. I already returned it to the photo department. On Saturday, uh, Thomas actually called me today um, for a little bit and asked me uh, about the podcast and like film school stuff because he's struggling to choose between LMU for screenwriting, Boston University for freaking economics, uh, Columbia University, no, Boston University for screenwriting, I think. Columbia University and CSUN, I really don't care. Uh, but uh, on Saturday, um, he's going to have Aoba on his podcast, on a silly little podcast um, in the morning, which means that at 8 a.m. I have to be there at Thomas's place. Um, so fine, you know, it's fine if I wake up a little early. That's totally okay. I've been doing that like so many days in a row. Um, so might as well. Um... So that's Saturday and Sunday. I probably won't go to church. If I end up having a haircut on Friday, then I don't need to go to church. There's no reason for me to go. So on Sunday, I think I'll go to watch Spider-Verse with Michelle. Um, and that's it. And uh, I like that even though summer holiday hasn't begun. But my next four days is filled with hangout events. Even more eventful than my uh, spring break, uh, hilariously enough. So um, yeah. And it's interesting because... I realize that so many things happen after spring break, like between February and mid-April, like nothing, like almost nothing happened other than me slowly starting to be in love with Leslie and film 33 slowly starting, but nothing else happened. And then after spring break, it's just boom, 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 boom. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, and then of course the elephant in the room is Leslie, um, I honestly don't know. I think she doesn't know either. Um, I'm still waiting for a text. Still waiting, waiting, waiting. Again, I'm not going to do anything about it because I don't want to go out of my way to do things about it. And also one thing Potter said to me yesterday that um, he had a very good point was this is the first time I've ever dated some, a person. Uh, why all the mental chess and all the upper hand, lower hand, psychological warfare. That's going to ruin my own perception of dating. Like, my first dating experience, and it's already that bad, or already that complicated. It doesn't have to be like that. So I don't have to feed into how complicated it is by making it more complicated. So I should just stay back and relax. Because, because I'm not the one at fault. And also, 
I shouldn't make the situation more complicated than it's supposed to be. So again, I'm waiting, I'm chilling in my room. If Leslie wants to text me, she will. I don't know how. Uh, speaking of which, Jesenia, the PA, texted me um, asking me if I could give her Theo's number and I'm like, sure. So I asked Theo and Theo's like, go ahead. Uh, apparently Jesenia has this acting job and maybe Theo would be interested. Anyways, and that's pretty much it for today. And I'll begin uh, organizing the rap party for Film 33, which is going to be fun. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, regardless, I will see Leslie again, you know, in the rap party or, you know, in the pickup day. I will see her again. Um, so it's not like the absolute end of the world and I'll never see her ever. The only time I can say that I'll never see Leslie ever will be like, I don't know, the end of my life here in my college. Um, the end of my life here, like the last day of class. Like the last, I don't know, the last film 41 before the next film 33 kicks in in early December or something. And then maybe I would say, okay, yeah, that's the last time I'll ever see her. Um, and if by then our relationship isn't resolved, then fuck it, because it would have been half a year already. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll see. Um, I don't know, just today I just keep thinking of things that I could be doing with Leslie. Um, again, I, I've never smoked a cigarette before. I want her to force me to smoke one at some point. And I low-key wish that it would have been, like, the last day of the shoot at CMD, you know, that this would happen. <coughs> um, and then, um, yeah, I just want to get drunk with her. I want to listen to music with her. I was listening to Radiohead earlier today, and I was like, man, I wish Leslie would hear this good music. And I was thinking about, I was cooking food. And I was just thinking, man, that should I be cooking this for Leslie if I had the chance? Like, there's just so much I could do with her. You know, there's so much I could do with her. And I saw a meme, and it's like, ooh, the average dating experience. And it's just a guy and a girl, or you know, two people, regardless of genders, uh, walking in a city, and then like eating food in a restaurant, and then having sex. And it's like kind of stupid and boring but honestly if I and Leslie are together like like I don't know I think these traditional dates is just not like out of the question I feel like honestly low-key part of what we're doing now like separation and all this speculation and all that while it really sucks it's I feel like it's part of the romantic process like there's something really intensely romantic about this in the mood for love ass situation <laughs> um but it's bad like i wish we both see each other constantly and speak to each other constantly and actually enjoy our lives and actually be happy um you know without doing the conventional walking in the mall and eating in a restaurant or something you know i don't know we should do something more interesting, like, I don't know, make short films together. I think that would be a great way of dating. Literally, filmmaking beyond the set. Or, I mean, that's actually a terrible idea. I don't know, um, fucking get lost somewhere. Like, challenge ourselves to some weird shit, like getting lost in LA or exploring or adventuring or something like that. Um... I don't know, so much I could do with her, really. But she's also extremely busy. So, uh, who knows.